In this video, we're going to peel back another layer of the listen bus, and we're gonna focus on one particular preference. So that is solo through listen bus. I'm going to select this and notice that we lost our solo safe status on our effects return. Okay, let's talk about the listen bus real quickly for a moment. The way that I'm using it is I'm basically setting this to a completely different output with my intention being that I want to be able to leave my main mix completely unaffected so that if I have an artist in the booth, I always try to get everybody to listen to the main mix and I only create cue mixes when somebody asks for something that's drastically different than the main mix. So by default, I want everybody to listen to the main mix. So I could have a producer sitting over here and they're listening to the main mix. The artist is in the booth. They're listening to the main mix unless they need something custom, in which case I'll create a cue mix. And then me, myself, I'm listening to the main mix, but it's passing through the listen bus and I'm listening to basically whatever I've set here. I'm using Sonarworks, which is my room correction software of choice. I'm listening to a zero latency mode where I have a correction curve for these particular headphones. So when I'm making my EQ decisions and stuff like that while we're tracking, that I can trust the results my headphones are giving me. All right. That being said, this is a very particular use case and not everybody is listening with two or three sets of speakers and with a monitoring system where they're able to monitor multiple different outputs of different interfaces and switch everything on the fly. So let's deactivate my room correction software and I'm going to toggle the listen bus to the main outs. So this is something that we can do. We're essentially listening through the listen bus but it's using the same outputs. Now, truthfully, I've never used it like this until recently. I always use it set to a different output. But let's talk about why this is so useful for I think the majority of users. Okay, let's focus on soloing tracks for a moment. I mentioned that this solo option over here, solo through listen bus, this enables actually two new soloing modes with, from within Studio One. Now, once you have your listen bus activated, and you're soloing through your listen bus, this will change the behavior of things. So what I'm going to do is with this option off, let's take a look at soloing this track. So this is just a channel and I have an effects return on it. If I solo this, it automatically solos the effects return. Any effects return that I create, they get solo saved by default. And this is the case with a lot of other DAWs as well. So let's remove this effects return for a second and let's go back here. Now what happens if I had basically sent this channel to a bus? And what happens if on this bus, I basically was running some type of EQ? Maybe I had like a radio style filter. So let's activate some filters over here. We'll go to 48 and we'll activate this one. Now let's listen to this channel. Okay, so we have our effect, or rather we have our bus and we have a, a, an effect on the bus and then we have a send, so everything gets sold together. Now the thing is, if I solo this track, notice that it automatically solos any buses and any routing, it solos it all downstream. So this is something to take into consideration, all right? Now I'm going to hop over to this wrench icon and let's enable solo through listen bus. Okay, first of all, all of our solos disappears, not a big deal. First of all, I wanna talk about one thing in specific, okay? If we solo this channel, let's solo it and let's have a listen. Okay, wait a second, what's going on here? Let me deactivate the solo through listen bus feature and solo. We have this filtered effect when we have the normal solo behavior and when we solo through the listen bus. Okay, interesting. Why is this? Well, basically, regardless of the fact that there's routing built in where this channel is being passed to bus two and then bus two has an effect on it and then bus two is going to the main outs, when we solo in this method using AFL or PFL, it is soloing the channel and it is just routing it directly to wherever we have our output set, in this case, main outs. Now, another thing to take into account is the AFL and PFL mode. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say most of the time, maybe potentially all the time, you would most likely want to have this in an AFL mode. And the way that we stay in AFL, which is after fader listen, is by making sure that the pre-fader listen icon over here is not active. So I'm going to go into AFL mode, which is with the pre-fader listen button not active, and I'm going to make some changes while this is soloed. Okay, so I'm moving my levels up to down. 
and we're hearing that change. I'm going to pan to the left. I'll pan to the right. We'll go back to the center. Okay, fair enough. Now I'm going to switch to prefader listen. So this is now in PFL mode. Okay, wow, that's loud. Let me try to turn it down. It's not changing. Let me turn it up. Let me try to pan it. Pan it this way. Nothing's changing. Okay. Basically, the easy answer for this is that it's because it's in a PFL mode. And any changes that we make to either the level or the panning is not going to affect how we hear the sound. So for that reason, I, is why I advise stay in AFL mode, especially if you're used to your levels that you make in terms of changing them, affecting how loud things are. But another thing I want to point out is we're soloing the channel over here. And then I mentioned that it's routing it directly to the listen bus, because keep in mind the name of this preference, solo through listen bus. So this is basically just taking this routing this could be routed to anything and it will just automatically, when you solo it, it's just gonna route it to the listen bus. Now our listen bus is set to our main outs. So what happens if I wanted to solo the filtered version? Because keep in mind, this is being sent to this track and it is getting some processing done in terms of this EQ over here. Well, that's a simple one. Just solo the bus. Now the same rules apply here in terms of the bus channel for prefader listen. See, I move this down or I move it up, it doesn't change. I move it to the left or I move it to the right, it doesn't change. But what happens if I change something upstream? For example, here, notice if I change it now, because this is feeding into it, it is affecting the level. So why is this? Well, because like I said, the PFL and AFL mode, it's basically just cherry picking this channel and it's directly routing it to whatever you have set to as your listen bus while it's in solo mode. So if I had anything upstream that's feeding into this bus, then that's something that we can take into account. So that's one major difference. And this could be seen as whatever. If you're using lots of bus channels, maybe to a, a user watching this who is mixing or tracking through templates that have bus channels running into bus channels, maybe you say, oh, this mode is completely not for me. Fair enough, it probably isn't. But for somebody who is perhaps running a, a tracking studio and you're doing um, basic tracking sessions where you have lots of tracks that are set up and all of your tracks are then just routed to your main outs, then this is actually definitely something you should take into consideration. Okay, so that's one thing we talk about when we're using um, AFL and PFL modes and how it affects the solo behavior and how it interacts with effects returns. I want to make a really quick note of something. If it's really a big bother to you that it affects things like, for example, you would have to solo this track and you'd have to solo this track to hear your effects returns, then just make a group. Just take the two of these, put them together, make a group, right? And then if we go to our group options over here, we can basically right click and we can choose the options we want. In which case I would just say, make a mutant solo group. Now, if you solo out this channel, it will automatically have the same kind of vibe as if we're soloing the the channel and we are in the standard solo in place mode. That being said, I'm going to, uh, whoops, I'm gonna remove this group because I wanna show you something else now. By far, one of the biggest advantages why you should use this mode, why you should consider using this mode at a minimum is with respect to working with QMix Sense. Okay. So this video has been done and my QMixes in general, I have QMix mute follows channel always set up. So why do I have this set up? Okay, if I basically, let me see if I can do this without having, no, we can't do it with both windows. So if I deselect this option and I click apply, notice what happens with our QMixes. So I've got a QMix enabled in my output setup. I've got a QMix enabled for QA which is one of my QMixes. Now I'm also recording that stream because I'm able to route this to be able to be recorded for this video. So if we take a look at what happens with this preference off, notice that we don't have a QMix send on our bus channels or our effects channels. So that doesn't work for me because if ever I'm running a QMix, it's most likely going to be for a vocalist who is in the booth. And 90% of the time that I'm working with a vocalist, they have at least a reverb, but sometimes it's a reverb and a effects and maybe even a widener for the tracking session. So that's why I choose to have this option enabled. Now, one caveat of having this option enabled is that we get our Q send back for our effects returns in our bus channels. 
but that if I was to solo something, it affects what the artist is hearing in their cue mix when I solo something that I'm listening to in the main mix. So I'm going to just temporarily disable solo through listen bus. Okay, so I'm going to press play and let's listen to the difference between the cue mix and the main mix. Here's the main mix. And now let's hop over to the cue mix. Here we have a click track, but other than that, the levels are the same. The main difference here is that we have a click track. Now I'm gonna go back to my main mix. Okay, now I'm gonna solo the main mix. So now let's say I wanted to solo this, or maybe I'm in the control room and a producer's beside me and they say, hey, solo that track for a second, but maybe we're still recording. What is the artist hearing? What happened to the artist's mix? So me soloing in the control room is affecting the artist's mix. Now, this is the issue with the solo in place behavior and having this preference enabled, which is the way that I work. I always wanna have this enabled because I always wanna give an artist uh, a headphone mix that has effect sense. Now, watch what happens when we enable solo through listen bus. Keep in mind, we always have to understand what's going on with our routing in terms of if I wanted to solo something, I have to understand that if it's going through additional bus channels and I'm soloing it upstream, that I might not be hearing things exactly as it's passing through the main mix. But if you have that understanding, then I don't think that's an issue. So now let's listen to the exact same mix. This is the main mix. This is the Q mix. Back to the main mix, and now I'm gonna solo out a track in particular. Maybe this time I'm soloing something different. Maybe this time I'm soloing this. I wanna focus just in on this track. Let's focus on this. Okay, we have another synth. We can focus on the bass. Let's go back to our drums. I wanna hear the drums and the effects. Let's go back to our Q mix. Awesome. Q-Mix is not being affected by anything that we're soloing here. Solo this, main mix, artist Q-Mix. We'll go back to bar nine. Main mix. Maybe I wanna to listen to these two elements or bass and drums together. Somebody says, okay, what about the effects return? No problem. What's the artist hearing? Now I can still adjust the artist cue mix any way I want. So if I wanted to, for example, say the artist doesn't need to hear the bass, I'll turn off the bass. Maybe the artist doesn't need to hear anything except this. And then maybe the artist wants to hear a different level of the bass. Maybe the artist wants to hear less of all of these channels, but our main mix is whatever's happening here. So this is the benefits of using the solo through listen bus. I would always recommend using it in AFL mode, which is with the pre-fader listen toggle deactivated. And then once you have an understanding of how you need to solo things and how you would also need to solo your effects returns if you wanted to hear that, it's not really a big deal. And this gives you the benefit that you can work with the QMix mute follows channel option activated or selected, which means that you will have an effects return for your bus channels and your reverbs. But then you have the benefit that you can solo through the main mix and you're not gonna affect anybody else. Now, let's say that I wanted to solo just for me personally. Well, then I wouldn't have my QMix or my listen bus rather, I would then set this to an alternate output. In that case, if I wanted to solo and just for me, but I wanted to leave the main mix completely interrupted, I wanted to leave the artist's cue mix completely interrupted, at that point, I would have to have the ability to either map out my headphones to listen to something directly, where I can map out my headphones and say, okay, I wanna monitor temporarily on my cans, I wanna monitor on phones too, for example, which is what I use, I want to monitor the listen bus. Then if I was doing the soloing, if I wanted to zero in on something, I could solo just for me, my main mix in the control room, and the main mix that everybody on Kansas is listening to is going to be unaffected. And then the any custom Q mix that I have, that is going to be unaffected as well. So this is the beauty of solo 
soloing using the solo through listen bus option. And once you understand AFL and PFL and how they function with respect to comparing it to a solo in place behavior, once you understand these rules, then in terms of a tracking scenario, it can actually be very, very usable, regardless of whether you're monitoring through the main mix because you're working off the same mix and you have a producer sitting beside you, you're soloing things, or if you just ha- uh, want to be able to um, have a custom cue mix for something and you want to work for yourself, then just set an alternate output. And if you have a Personas interface or any interface really where you can set alternate outputs in terms of what your headphones are listening to. The beauty of Studio One though is with the audio device controls, I, I have access to my quantum uh, headphone routing directly from within Studio One. I don't even have to bring in um, here, right? Because I can access this type of thing from here. But if you're using a third-party interface, it's not a big deal if you have access to be able to uh, adjust your output matrix routing for whatever headphones you're using, then that's something that you can do as well. So soloing through the listen bus, AFL and PFL modes. I hope that you got something from this video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.